Hey Lola, so I decided to come back really quick with Billy. Um, you guys know Billy is from Silicone Studio too. Um, I haven't got her on the paint table just yet, but I wanted to come on and just talk about a few things because I know a lot of people like buy their kits to send to their artists or they buy their kits, hold it um, again to wait to send to their artists or hold it for you know when they're ready to try to paint paint it themselves sometimes you know like oh i'm gonna paint a practice one first and then i'll paint this particular sculpt da 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 now before i get started i want to say number one i'm not an expert number two there's so many different ways of you know arriving to excellence or whatever you want to get to um the end result Everybody have their different way of the way they prep their kits, the way they clean their kits. Um, everybody have their different way of doing everything. The way they paint, what they paint with, what they use, what solutions they use, what paints they use. Um, there's people buying pre-mixed colors now um, as well. Already, you know, just a whole bunch of things um, that people do. Um, so I'm not here to argue that or dispute any artist or sculptor directions or instructions I'm just giving my advice based off of my personal experience and the little bit of knowledge that I've obtained over the years of painting I'm still fairly new and when I say I'm fairly new yes I've been doing it for a couple of years now but I'm still very new because with silicone just like with reborns if anybody know you're constantly learning new stuff products are changing so you've got to keep up with what's you know what's going on so the first thing I want to say is a lot of times when you get a kit you want to see what size they wear okay you're a collector you want to you want to know what size this baby is what it looked like in person because it's blank and um you you know you've seen it on pictures and stuff so you got to take it out of the pack a lot of times it come with instructions saying you have so many days to inspect the kit especially if they have armatures I suggest that you you know take the time to bend the arms back and forth this one does not have armatures but you know you want to do that um i ex i think you should definitely take if it has drinking wet you want to give it a bottle of water um or alcohol and just uh not not alcohol like <laughs> liquor like alcohol rubbing alcohol type situation um and just to make sure that it, it it's flowing, the drinking water is flowing properly. Um, anything that you see that's out of the norm, um, that's not working properly, the armatures don't bend, they don't hold their pose, um, the drinking water is, the water is not coming out, you wanna contact the person you bought it from, which is usually either the sculptor or the pour. You want to contact your contact person of who you bought it from. You know, I know like if, you buy a kit from someone that has a pour, a lot of times the actual sculptors still handle all their customer service. So, and what I'm, yeah. So what I mean by that is like a lot of times, uh, say for instance, well, I'm not gonna get into that. Um, so, um, The other thing is, I know that this is contradicting when you see this baby laying here, she has on a hat, she has on a diaper. Um, a lot of times for videos, you, you really don't wanna show their uh, boy or girl parts uh, just because of YouTube new rules and regulations and stuff like that, because they think they're real babies a lot of times and not just an art doll. So um, we usually cover them up, however, um, I won't lie, a lot of times what I would do, even if a baby come in Pampers, a lot of times um, my kids do not come in anything. But when if they do come in to come with clothes or Pampers or anything on, I usually take that off of them immediately. Um, but however, a lot of times, like especially dealing with sculptors that's been around for a while, the pores, they know what's, you know, okay and what's not. Either way, this... It's kind of lint-free hat, but if I was to put her on a fuzzy hat, it would cause more lint to be on her 
Um, the diaper is not going to really leave no fuzzies on her. I don't wouldn't put her on anything that's scented, which is why I don't do like lo uh, pampers or loves when they are... Um, pampers kind of have a scent to them and I'm just like nervous about them so I don't put them on on raw silicone however this is where the debate comes in a lot of people say oh well they have to clean it really good and properly anyway before they paint it and that is also true and I've become a little bit confident to where I feel okay doing a little something um, with them sometime because you know, a lot of times I am doing promos or I am, you know, showing, doing a review and I want people to be able to see them and get an idea and a feel. And I've gotten a little comfortable. However, a lot of times, even so, I still usually do them pretty much with no clothes on. Sorry guys, if I keep walking away, I'm checking, watching my baby out the window. Um, <laughs> so, um, but as a collector, I suggest that you don't put anything on your blank kit. Of course, if you talk to your artist and she say, oh yeah, you could dress it up and play with it and all this stuff and, and, and then just send it, you know, strip it down, send it to me when you're ready, blah, 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 blah. Um, or they tell you to powder it down, powder it down, da, 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 da. If that's what your artists tell you, by all means, do what you do. But for me, if I am taking a kit from someone, which is why a lot of times I won't buy blank silicone for second market, because I use specific products on my dolls, and I know there are certain particular matting powders and stuff like that that are that is harder to get off for some reason or I've had issues in the past maybe it was a one-time thing but it scared me for life I don't I ask my customers do not powder your kits do not dress your kits do not put pacifiers in the mouth sometimes people put latex in the mouth ma'am please do not even though you tell people that a lot of times they still do it they think you don't know when you get it but the cleaning process is just that much harder sometimes, especially if they put powder and all types of stuff. Silicone is finicky enough to where it doesn't, anything can inhibit it from curing. So why add to the possibilities of that? That is my biggest thing. You want this artist to provide you with a beautiful painted baby with no issues, no hiccups. But yet you'll go and put all this product on it, play with it, brush it down, powder it down, dress it a million times. And just to take pictures of this blank kit and then send it to the artist and expect them to have a easy, flawless, seamless painting job. Don't do it. That's just my opinion. Get your kit. By all means, take it out. Look at it. Look at the fingers. Make sure they're, you know, they're not... There's no splits, no tears, you know, um, no rips. I got a kit. Um, I've gotten a couple kits that had little issues. Now, I'm going to tell you some things that may happen when you get a kit. And usually a sculptor will catch it. Sometimes they don't. Um, but sometimes you might have a little, uh, you know, a little mishap or something that... Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Maybe you might not necessarily um, a rough spot or anything, but um, say I got a kit one time, the collector received it and it had a little um, tear in the crease. Not really a tear tear, but it was where I guess when they pulled it out of the mold, um, those sometimes are very easy to fix throughout the, um, painting process. But if it's like the fingers coming off or something like, I mean, some artists will fix that stuff, but those type of things you want to make the sculptor aware and they may take it back and repair it or send you another kit. I don't know. But some of these things are commonly seen with certain pores. 
I tend to because I'm very fairly new that's why I like clean pores very well seamed because I don't like to try to do all that stuff um, I don't think I'm confident enough to do it and so um, I like when I can just basically the kit is ready to pour um, sometimes people send it with the spout still on and they have to seam that part themselves and stuff I don't do all that so some stuff you know and you have to know what's kind of what's normal or what's not um, I might see I'm trying to think of what else you might see on a kit um, you might see a little bit of a discoloration from when they seamed or something like that. That will fix itself during painting process as well. It shouldn't be like lumpy or extremely obvious and pointed where it's, you know, standing out. But you're going to see, you might see some of those things sometime. Um, I'm not, I'm not telling you guys that you should get this raggedy kit that's just like, all discolored and flawed and bumpy and lumpy and all this stuff and that's okay I'm not telling you that the only way that is okay is if that's what you pay for and they disclose that, that this is a imperfect pour and they sold it to you that way and you knew that going in um, but my point of this video is is for you guys <laughs> sometimes you might get something and you be freaking out like oh my god it's got this you know uh, I can see color on you know different it's, it looks like it's, it's something going on here or shine like this one got a little shine right here silicone is shiny for the most part a lot of times they're brushed down or whatever the 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 sculptor do before they send it some sculptors send them extremely tacky straight they don't brush them down um, I think um, Maria Grover her kits come very tacky I actually love it I love that she sends them raw she hasn't polished them down in anything when I clean it it's you know easy I know that it's gonna cure properly because it's tacky um, so, um, and that is a tip that I will give you guys, your kit, if it's soft silicone and the softer it is, it's going to be tacky when you clean it properly. It should be sticky. Sticky is good. <laughs> um, that's a good sign. It's going to cure. It's going to stick. So I, I do not frown on that. It does collect every type of lint when you get it and it does require a thorough, very thorough wash a couple washes um, I wash my kits several times before I I get painted on them so um, I just wanted to share that because I know a lot of my collector friends and you know my Lola's are out here buying kits and I just want you guys to just hear from me in my opinion I don't you know there's been a couple times people are like oh you would you trade a kit or you know for a doll and it might have been a kit that I really like but baby you got that doll fully dressed you've had it for a while you've been playing with it you're giving it pamper, uh, pacifiers no ma'am I don't want it because I don't know what type of product is on that thing and trust me I've had a kit to not cure properly and baby it was hell to pay and I don't ever want to go through that again although I'm sure in my lifetime I will in fact, I think I've done, it's happened to me maybe twice. Um, it is so traumatizing, especially when it's like a $3,000 kit and something is not curing properly and you don't know what the heck to do. It is traumatizing. It is, you are losing your brain. That's a lot of money. These are not vinyl kits. These are not $100 kits. These are thousand dollar kits two thousand three thousand so if you don't care about your money that's fine but then don't get mad with the the artist when your kit does not cure another thing sometimes it's not the artist I say this lightly because I see a lot of artists blame sculptors when it really is the artist so everything is like a catch-22 Sometimes it's not the artist. Sometimes people are not pouring exactly with fully platinum silicone um, with their kits. 
Sometimes they're mixing stuff in them that's not compatible with platinum silicone paints, with psycho paints, or whatever. Sometimes, you know, sometimes artists are using paints that's not compatible with the kit. But platinum silicone should stick to platinum silicone. So, sometimes people are buying this cheaper silicone. Some of them are leaching oil. I've had that. Um, you don't know... Sometimes with silicone, it's very hard. So give these artists and sculptors a little grace. Sometimes I remember one time when there was formulas changing and with the actual like Ecoflex 20 and all that stuff itself. And they had to figure out, recalculate their formulas again to get the right softness and what they were doing before. It's so much goes into silicone that a lot of people do not know and do not understand. Um... So take the time to talk to your artist or your sculptor when you have an issue first before running to social media, dragging their reputation down when you don't really know what's going on. I've watched and t t trust me, I was cringing and I'm so limited even in this video of what I can say where I saw collectors like beat down an artist but I know for a fact that the particular pour itself is problematic because I've watched several videos of several experienced artists experience so many different things. Another thing, a kit may come across and look like it's opaque, which I like to paint more opaque kits, if that makes sense. I don't like translucent see-through kits. There are some that it's kind of like they look opaque to the eye, but as you start painting and get under that, that really natural light, you can see a little bit of shallowness to the the pour. And let me tell you something, baby. You can you cannot make that kit look as good as you could one that's poured opaque like this one here. Um, I don't care how good of a painter you are. You can't. And the darker you go, the worse it's going to look. Um, I had a kit that I painted, and I said, "Hey, mommy, I can't go too much further." And I thought the kit was not translucent but as I was painting I could it, it it was there and I couldn't go further and I'm like mommy I can't go too far because it's not gonna look good I'm not gonna be able to give you the same results so that's another thing like don't go buy this off the wall pour and expect to get this high quality looking paint job there's an artist that I use an example in my previous life <laughs> Before, you know, people were like, oh, she's hating on people. Um, it wasn't to speak against the artist, but I was saying how I used to watch her paint. And I was like, ooh, her painting looks, you know, like choppy. But then as she painted more quality pour silicone kits, I was like, wow, her painting is beautiful. But it didn't show on the other kits because of the pour. So for a lot of people that don't understand why I'm picky about who I paint from, yeah, it might be a beautifully poured kit. I mean, um, sculpted kit. It may look beautiful, but if that pour is trash or problematic, leaching all types of oils and all that stuff, I'm not touching it again. I'm not going to paint from those pores. And I'm not going to badmouth those sculptors either, and I'm not going to point them out. So please don't message me because I'm not into that. I don't do that type of stuff. Now that I paint, I have to protect my my life, my lifestyle. I have to protect, you know, what I have going on. All I will tell you is sometimes if people say, "Oh, will you paint this sculpt?" I'll say, "I'm not painting that." You know what I mean? I don't paint. I won't paint that sculpt. Sometimes if I don't feel the sculpt, if I don't love it, if I don't like it. And I don't have to be like madly in love. It don't have to be like extra perfect. But if I don't see myself being able to be a benefit with my skills that I've acquired so far into painting that, I know it's not going to do good with my hands on them. So I will not paint certain certain sculpts, certain kits. Um, and a lot of people, I know people are like, oh, she's so picky. She don't do custom. She don't do this. She don't do that. I'm protecting me first. I ain't gonna lie, because <laughs> I'm not gonna protect you over me. I'm gonna protect me first, and then I'm gonna protect you. Because if I mess up, you getting something messed up. Not saying that even when I paint on a perfect kid and a perfect skull, it might not come out perfect. Um, and perfection is measured in this art individually. 
um, some of the techniques I use and some of the ways that I paint other people be like oh that's not I don't I don't like that I don't like that and some people might be like oh my god I love the way she paints um, I put a lot of layers in my kits I put a lot of time in my kits and therefore when I'm painting them is you know I'm liable to have a flaw because I'm not just airbrushing I'm not not taking away from airbrush I seen I know a few artists that airbrush beautifully but I'm not airbrushing I'm not doing quick methods I don't fast cure I don't do any of that I don't knock any of it I just stick to what I know and don't fault me for that sorry I got a little emotional about that a little passionate about that area because I, I you you guys don't really get to hear a lot of stuff from artists and what they experience we always hear collectors oh they take too long oh they this oh they that you know I've had collectors come back to me and say oh uh, so and so has already painted my doll and she's getting ready to root it and it'd be like in a week and a half and I'm like great and I see the doll and I'm like oh I get it <laughs> yeah um if you wanted me to do that <laughs> but no just seriously I'll just I, I I I can't um so I get passionate about that part um none of us artists are perfect we all gonna have something that somebody is not gonna like um I had to come to grips with that so if you're an artist and you're a painting I'm speaking to you right now there's going to be a baby that you're going to paint. You're going to send it to that mommy and she's going to hate it. <laughs> Hello, she's going to hate it. And then you're going to either learn from that experience or you're going to become a monster and, you know, just go downhill from there. So it's your choice on that. But um, this is a very long video. I just wanted to put that out there. I usually put these type videos in the chat box. I decided to share it out here. I hope that. I don't regret sharing it out here, but there's that. Um, even when I'm painting, one last thing, even with the mouth and the pacifiers, even when I'm painting um, and I'm not done with the total whole matte and glossing the lips and all that stuff, I don't put pacifiers in the mouth. So I'm very particular and very, very careful. And even with my babies, even though now I paint and I feel like I could fix some things, I still don't use latex pacifiers. I have pacifiers that I found that look like latex that are not, they're 100% silicone. Um, I I use those. Um, Sometimes I use, I might use uh, bottles as a prop, like this bottle, and I don't even wanna touch the nipple here, but this bottle, it's actually a latex nipple but I'll use it as a prop only, usually with my Reborns, to be honest, it's actually sitting on my Reborn table. Um, but I try my hardest to, you know, do that. So I just wanted to share that um, it's a lot of other things that myths and things that I don't really necessarily um, sign up to or go by, I, I would, get into that stuff i'll probably do another video a part two in the chatter box and talk about some of those things but yeah so anyway um that is it this little girl is actually going to get a bath for real and um she's actually going to get on the table and the other one is going to get on my rooting table ah i'm so excited I've never been so excited to root except for when I've rooted Ducky. And as you guys know, Ducky is sold. Ducky has a new mommy. If you guys don't know Ducky has a new mommy, that's why you guys, this baby may or may not go. But I am going to order one for my personal self. That's another thing. I know. Oh my God, this video is so long. Okay, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. Um, we'll talk about it later.